Once upon a time, in an ancient Ukrainian forest, there was a special source that gave life and power to everything there. But one cold winter, the sawmill owner came and begged the guardian of the forest for a bit of that source to save his sick daughter. Later he came back, but not alone. He had an army, wanting to take the source for himself. The big fight happened, and suddenly, there were no humans around. The guardian of the forest was really weak after the fight and told all the creatures in the forest that humans were no longer allowed. Fast forward to some years later, Mappa, a forest creature, wakes up from her winter sleep. It's almost springtime, and she begins to bring the forest back to life. Not too far away, in a village, there's Lucas, a young musician. While he's playing, some papers are thrown around. Lucas finds out they're about a job offer. But before he could think much about it, a kid comes running, telling him that his uncle is sick. Right then, a lady named Kalina walks into the village. She's the daughter of the same sawmill owner from before. She got a plan to start the sawmill again. But for that, the villagers would need to cross a scary mountain. Once the villagers heard about the mountain, they got scared and said, No way. They didn't want to risk their lives. In the forest, Maka hears a creature crying out. She finds that hurt baby Lynx caught in a trap and helps it out. But then she hears the main guardian of the forest calling for her. Meanwhile, in the village, Lucas learns that his uncle is really sick. He needs medicine from the big city. Lucas tries to get money from his piggy bank, but he doesn't have enough. That's when he remembers the job offer from Kylina. He hurries to her big house. Kylina gives Lucas a mission, to find a special tree with a unique leaf. She even sends two big guys, the Bouncer Brothers, to go with him. Back in the forest, all the creatures are with the Guardian. He says he's too old and weak now and that they'll need a new Guardian soon. Everyone starts guessing who it might be. Maka tries to cheer everyone up, saying any of them could become the Guardian. But some of the creatures tease her, saying she's too trusting to be a Guardian. The scene then shows Lucas and the two big Bouncer Brothers are in a dark cave. But surprise, they find a secret way out, leading to a pretty forest. The brothers see some big bison and try to hunt them. Lucas, not wanting them to get hurt, messes up the brothers' aim. A loud gunshot scares everyone in the forest. Maka hears the panic and runs over. She sees the scared bison and calms them down. Determined to prove she's not just gentle but also assertive, she chooses to confront the humans directly. The brothers instruct Lucas to search for the tree while they inspect the surroundings. Lucas is kind of lost looking for the special tree, so he sits and starts playing his flute. The music grabs Maka's attention. She wants to sneak up on him. But she ends up talking, saying how beautiful the music is. Lucas gets startled, especially seeing Maka's weird pet frog, Swampy. He tries to run away but bangs his head and faints. When he opens his eyes, he's tied up, riding a bison. As Maka engages in conversation, she discerns that Lucas doesn't resemble the menacing human tales she heard. She then tells him she's like the spirit or soul of the forest. Meanwhile, the Bouncer brothers wander deeper into the forest. Out of nowhere, a mysterious fog surrounds them. Some enchanting forest nymphs appear and start leading them away. On the other hand, one of the big Bouncer brothers just vanishes, and the other one ends up in a yucky swamp. But he quickly snaps out of it and dashes off. Lucas is chatting with Maka and another forest buddy named Hush. He tells them he's just looking for some medicine for his sick uncle. Maka, being kind-hearted, decides to help him out. She gives him a tour of the beautiful forest, showing off all the cool spots. While they're by a waterfall, Lucas shares his dream of heading to the big city with his pals once his uncle is well. Maka's curious and asks what does he means by big city. Lucas tries to explain that it's like a jungle but of buildings instead of trees. Suddenly, Hush jumps in and hides Lucas behind some bushes. Just when Maka is about to ask what's up, the old forest guardian shows up. When asked about Lucas, Maka quickly makes up a story saying Lucas is like a distant relative of Hush. The guardian seems to buy it but says Lucas needs to join a special forest event before he can go. Maka whispers to a worried Hush that she'll find a way to safely get Lucas out later. Back in the village, the Bouncer brothers return to Kalina's big house. She's mad they didn't find the special leaf she wanted. Suddenly, half of her face starts to age super fast. She runs to her room and uses this magical stuff her dad once gave her. But, oh no. It's all gone and she's super upset about it. In the center of the forest, a big event is happening. Lucas spots a tree with the leaves he needs. The old guardian starts the ceremony and calls on nature's powerful spirits. Suddenly, a bright light shines and these spirits appear. They need to choose a new guardian and guess what? They pick Maka. She's shocked and unsure. But the old guardian tells her the spirits know what they're doing. With some new special powers, Maka is now the big guardian of the forest. But not everyone's happy. Some jealous forest creatures try to put her down, saying it's a mistake. Lucas jumps in to back up Maka. But these creatures are suspicious. They discover he's human. 
In the nick of time, Maka uses a cool trick with a mushroom to create a smoke screen. Lucas makes a run for it. As he's fleeing, Maka helps him out, sending a friendly lynx to guide him. She hands him some magic liquid and says it'll cure his uncle. But she warns him for not coming back or the creatures here might hurt him. Next day in the village, Luca's uncle drinks the magic liquid and bam. He's young and healthy. The two are so happy and go out to have some fun. But there's trouble. Carlina's nosy helper sneaks into Luca's home and takes a special leaf. When he tells Kalina about it, she realizes Lucas knows about the magical forest. She wants to know more, so she tells her helper to keep an eye on Lucas, to find out if he plans to visit that forest again. Maka, the new forest guardian, misses Lucas and wants to give back his left-behind flute. She thinks as the guardian, she needs to know about humans and decides to leave the forest. She reaches Lucas's village, changes her hair a bit, and drops by his place. Lucas is making her a necklace, how sweet. She gives back his flute and asks for a song before she goes. Lucas, though, asks her to stick around for the village festival. They have a blast dancing and enjoying. But as they're having fun, a magic flower blooms. Oh, and Kylina's sneaky assistant is still spying on them. Just as the party's heating up, Lucas's band says it's time to head to the city. Maka says her goodbyes too. Lucas plays a song for her on his flute, but the music does something wild. Maka's hair returns to its original color, and some glowy marks appear on her skin. Kalina's nosy assistant panics, shouting she's a dangerous forest creature. Lucas jumps to defend her but ends up knocked out. Things go sideways real quick. The villagers, with help from those bouncer brothers, capture Maka. Kalina, who's also there, talks about burning Maka, just like she claims Maka did to her dad. But Maka's powerful, remember? She fights back. But when another guy tries to hurt her, the old guardian steps in and gets hurt. He tells Maka humans can't be trusted. Meanwhile, Kalina's got a sneaky plan. She takes the necklace Lucas made for Maka and convinces Lucas she's captured Maka, getting him to sketch a map to the forest's magic source. But she tricks him. By the time Lucas knows he's been fooled, Kalina traps him in a basement that's quickly filled in with water. Not good. Kalina and her gang start chopping down trees using a big machine. Maka steps in with her special abilities, wanting to chat with Kalina about a truce. But Kalina drops a bomb. The sawmill guy never had a kid. His wife had tricked him, saying a magical drop could keep her forever young. Kalina also throws in that Lucas was not on Maka's side, making Maka super sad and weak. This gives the humans a window to press their attack. It's chaos. Forest creatures versus humans. In the middle of this, Lucas's dog rushes to Hush, trying to tell him Lucas is in big trouble. Over at the mansion, poor Lucas is nearly drowning in a flooding basement. Kylina's hair guy who was spying on Lucas suddenly has to deal with Hush and a creature named Swampy. While Hush keeps the stylus busy, Swampy unlocks the basement, pulls Lucas out, and gives him a good slap to wake him up. Back at the forest battlefield, Maka sees her forest friends in trouble. She tries her powers to help but feels kinda helpless. So she calls on a rock spirit, asking for super strong rage powers. In exchange, the spirit demands her life. Without hesitation, Maka consents. Suddenly, she's surrounded by a wild fire twister. Lucas escapes the mansion and sees Maka surrounded by fire. He wants to help but she pushes him back. Even though Hush warns him that Maka can't hear him, Lucas doesn't give up. An idea pops up. Maybe she'll hear his flute music. As he plays and everyone joins in singing, the angry fire around Maka fades. She falls and Lucas catches her. Tears fall from his eyes when he realizes she's not moving. It's like she's in some dreamy place of emptiness. Their spirit tells Maka she's got a price to pay. But she's not giving up. She powers up, refusing to be stuck in that lonely place forever. The spirits, seeing her determination, decide to give her another shot at life. Maka wakes up in Lucas' arms, they share a sweet moment and everyone, humans and forest creatures, decides it's time to be friends. And that's a wrap. So the moral of the story is if you play a flute in the forest and a spirit's hair changes color, it's probably best to hold off on village parties. And remember, folks, trusting strangers might lead to wildfire twisters, but at least you get cool rage powers.